In this video, I'll demonstrate how to record electric guitar with the Logic Pro X. The hardware used in this video include the Fender Ultra Stratocaster, a Focusrite Scarlett 18i20 audio interface, a MacBook Pro laptop, and a few quarter inch cables. Get started by inserting one end of the quarter inch cable into an input in the audio interface. Plug the other end of the cable into the guitar input. Next, plug the power cord into the audio interface and connect the USB from the audio interface to the MacBook Pro. One great advantage and very powerful thing about this setup now is with your audio interface set up to your computer, now you have several other inputs and outputs to jam with as many um, musicians and configure as many outputs as you see fit that you can utilize with the audio interface that you're using. Depending on what hardware you have, you might have to pick up a USB converter similar to this one. Now go ahead and power up your audio interface. The most common ways I output sound include connecting two monitor speakers to output jacks in the back of the audio interface and to use headphones. That way you can control the volume levels with the knobs on the front of the audio interface. And before moving on, I wanted to mention that there are several different sizes and brands of audio interfaces. This just happens to be another version of a Focusrite Scarlett. This is the 2i4. Proceed by opening Logic Pro X and creating a new project file. For recording guitar, I always select an audio track. That way you can hear stereo when you are listening to it with headphones. Now, browse the left hand side of the library to select the guitar of your choice. I go into the Logic library and select a clean guitar sound, such as the Jazz Clean guitar here. Usually before I start playing, I'll click the tuner and give my guitar quick tunes to make sure that I can sound the best possible. These are the count in and metronome buttons, which are very helpful when recording. The count in button here will click the specified times and beat that you select. You can also choose settings from this drop down. The metronome is chosen here. You can set your metronome settings by hitting the down arrow here or by hitting the metronome option under the record drop down. Most typically, you'll be adjusting the tone and the volume down at the bottom here. You can also set different options in the middle bar here. Um, I often find it helpful to find the duration of the song in time, so I'll set it um, to be an option something similar to this. Moving on to the left, you have the loop option here. By adjusting this yellow bar, you can loop to certain parts of the song. Moving to the left here is the record button. When you're ready to actually record your song, you click that. To the left of that is the play button, which you click when you want to play back the recording. This is the rewind button, which is very helpful to get back to the beginning of the song. This is the fast forward button. And to the left of that is the rewind button. Continuing on, this is the library button where you can choose your instrument. This is the information button which will give you information about your different track. 
This is the help button, which will give you help when you hover over certain items. This is the toolbar, which will help you further edit your tracks. These are the smart controls, which help you quickly modify your sound. This is the mixer. And finally, the editor, which helps you further edit your track. The guitar pedal board is a fantastic feature included with Logic Pro X. Press the inspector button to get to the plug-in panel here and you can choose to turn the pedal board on or off by clicking this button. Now choose the pedal board and you'll see the different pedal boards that are available to you. You can either double click on them or drag them into the main panel. And you can also turn them on and off again by pressing this button here. If you don't see the pedal board, click at the bottom of this box here to choose this plug-in. Navigate down to Amps and Pedals and choose the pedal board. So now that you have your pedal board in place, you can move from a fairly clean sound that you have set up currently like this. Pull up your pedal board here and add some effects. Get a little phase action here, maybe a little bit of chorus, and I want some distortion, let's see. So you can see uh, by choosing these different pedal boards you can greatly enhance the sound of your guitar. Another feature of the inspector tab is the ability to change your input by clicking here. Also, if you go back to the library, you can change your instrument here, and you can go back to your original choices by clicking on the menu below. And here you can see the several different guitar options that you have. The electric guitar even has different kinds of rigs, so now I'm in the country rig, and I'm choosing the honky tonk ranch. This is where the plugins are configured. I touched on those e earlier. That's what the pedal board is, and you have a ton of other choices here. Below in blue, you can see I also have the noise gate, the pedal bar, pedal board, amp, and a few others chosen. Now that we have the count into one bar and the metronome on, we're ready to record some guitar. Press the record button and begin. <laughs> Let's go ahead and play back this tune and check out some further features and effects that we can apply. In fact, some of my favorites. The first thing we can do is revisit this loop right here. Let's click that and identify the region of the track that we want to loop on while we uh, check out some different effects and hear them. So I've chosen to the end of the track here and this should loop over, um, over and over again while we hear it. The second thing I'm going to do is turn off the metronome because I don't want to hear the clicking while I focus on the sound effects. So one of the first things I'm going to look at is the amp here. I'm going to double click on the amp. In here we can see the selected amp that's configured for the guitar right now. So let's go ahead and play back the track and see how we can affect the, no the uh, playback. <laughs> Here is the amplifier. Um, you can choose different amps by going up and down here. Here's your vintage British head amp that's very obnoxious. Here's a surface amp. And you also have different models of amplifiers to the left here. So here's a modern British stack. And um, you can affect different things by turning the knobs and pressing the buttons uh, on the amplifier right here. Another great feature is the microphone and uh, cabinet over here to the right, which you can choose um, different ones by selecting on uh, this drop down here. 
and um, I'm going to choose something a little more pleasing on the ear. And what you can do also is change the microphone that you're recording with. And once you find a microphone that you like, you can also change its location in front of the amp uh, to change the sound there as well. And here's the output for your amp. And there was a loop back that just played back. Another great one to change the sound of your guitar is the channel EQ. And by adjusting the different levels here, you can greatly change the sound of your guitar. And that's the channel EQ. The final plugin I want to take a look at is the compressor, another one of the uh, top ones that is used. Um, you can get to the compressor by double clicking on the compressor in the plugin section here. And um, by clicking on these buttons here, there are several different styles that you can choose from. Uh, this is one of my favorites right here. Um, and what you can do now is when you play back your track, you can adjust the different levels for compression. And that's the compressor. There are several different plugins, like I had mentioned before, that you can change your guitar sound with. And I would encourage you to go ahead in here and explore as many as you, you would like to because you can really um, have some great guitar sounds by changing your effects here. And that concludes this video. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I hope you found this helpful.